This is such an important part of this course. Straight up, go get your vitamin D levels checked and your vitamin B levels. I hear people say that they find out that their D levels are low and they just accept it. It's really important to get these back into a healthy range because there is a range where best sleep occurs. And this is also so important for your immune system. It must be said that you can have too little of these vitamins and hormones or too much. There is a sweet spot for ultimate sleep and health. Key terms here that you'll want to research for yourself is endogenous vitamin D3, vitamin B, all eight of them, and acetylcholine. When we talk about vitamin D, it's vitamin D3 that we are concerned with. Vitamin D is actually a hormone that is synthesized in the skin from the sun's UVB rays. Yes, those midday rays. If you live more than 37 degrees above or below the equator, you can't get vitamin D from the sun in the winter months, or at least very little. There are two experts in the field of vitamin D that I'm going to refer you to. First is Dr. Michael Hollick, an expert in the field of vitamin D, and Dr. Sasha Gominak, a sleep expert who specializes in vitamin D and vitamin B. Vitamins and chemicals in the body are way out of my field of expertise, but as a sleep project manager, it's my duty to point you in the right direction and refer you onto the best possible information and practices. I want you to reflect on when we started getting out of the sun as a species. When did we start working indoors more? When did we start using air conditioning? When did artificial light become the norm? When did technology start playing a bigger role in our lives compared to our ancestors? There are vitamin D receptors in nearly all of our cells. That shouts out to me that vitamin D is important. It's not just in tissues and organs, nearly every cell. The way we were designed or evolved took into consideration the sun, or we evolved and were conditioned to the ever-present sun. And for some reason, we extracted an important hormone, vitamin D, from interacting with its energy, from being outside. We aren't doing that anymore, and it's impacting us. Foods are different all over the world, but the sun is constant. Regardless of the sleep focus, vitamin D is imperative for general well-being. So with a sleep focus, we need it. Here are the main points Dr. Gominak talks about for you to be aware of with a sleep focus. If you are deficient in vitamin D, you will eventually be deficient in the B vitamins as well. And this affects the microbiome in our gut. There is an interplay with the microbiome that is responsible for a lot of our immunity. The microbiome feeds off the vitamin D and then gives us B vitamins. For good sleep, she says that there is a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine that is necessary. And you guessed it, it is produced from having the right balance of vitamin D and vitamin Bs. You'll find the literature saying that acetylcholine is responsible for lowering the heart rate for sleep. Dr. Gominak also says that it is also responsible for keeping us appropriately paralyzed during certain stages of sleep, mainly REM sleep. So it is possible to get too paralyzed and not paralyzed enough. We need to find that sweet spot. Dr. Gominak says that vitamin D is dangerous in the sense that you have to get the right dosage. She has a supplementation program called the Right Sleep Program, and it can help you get your D and B to their optimal levels. The links are below. Dr. Hollick says 30 nanograms per milliliter to 100 nanograms per milliliter is normal. Um, again, Holic seems to be all about general wellness and dodging disease. Gomenak, though, has a specific sleep focus and she's helped thousands of people. And she says best sleep occurs in the 60 to 80 nanogram per milliliter range. I must add that the general medical community recommend 30 to 50 nanograms per milliliter. So if you want to play it safe, go for 45 to 50 nanograms per milliliter. This would be a good goal and remain in a safe range. Personally, I trust Gomenak's research as she specializes in sleep, but it's up to you. Dr. Holick does say that statistically, 40% of the world is deficient. That's 20 nanograms per milliliter and below, or insufficient, that number, plus 21 to 29 nanograms per milliliter. So winding this up, I want you to watch these two YouTube clips. 
There are very good summaries of vitamin D. Dr. Gominak's insight on the relationship between vitamin D, microbiomes, vitamin B, and acetylcholine is superb. Take these videos seriously and take action. This will improve your sleep long-term and make all the other techniques I have talked about easier to implement. The better chemically you're set up for sleep, the easier it is to wind down the body and mind.